Hello and welcome to Super Great Kids Stories, wise tales from storytellers around the world which will make you laugh and sometimes cry. Recommended for ages 5 to 105. I'm Kim and I love stories. Hello Super Great Kids and how are you? I'm very pleased because it's nearly Christmas. And I love it when all my family are at home and we can play games and do jigsaw puzzles and eat chocolates all day long. This story is a traveller fairy tale about friendship. It's told by the wonderful storyteller from Ireland, Kate Corkery. Today's story has got several animals in it. Can you think of some other stories with animals in them? While we have a quick word with the grown-ups. Well, hello there, grown-ups and Super Great Kids Stories fans. As you probably know, we depend on your generosity and support to keep making this podcast. If you subscribe and join the Owlets Club, you'll get access to all sorts of lovely extras like subscriber-only episodes, early and ad-free episodes, as well as a newsletter from Story Owl, word puzzles, book recommendations, ooh, and film footage of our live shows. To support Super Great Kids Stories and join the Owlets Club, just click subscribe in Apple Podcasts or visit patreon.com forward slash Stories. Hello, Super Great Kids. I'm back. I wonder how many animal stories you thought of. There's so many. Since our theme is fairy tales, I thought of stories like A White Bear for the King and The Boy and the Snow Wolf. Now, are you sitting comfortably? Snuggle down and get ready for this magical Christmas Eve story. Gather your pets around you, they might like it too. And let's welcome storyteller Kate Corkery. Hello, super great kids. Did you know? Long ago in Ireland and in Scotland, people believed that animals could speak on Christmas Eve. Oh, yeah, the one night of the year when they could speak. The story I'm about to tell you comes from Scotland and it was told by a wonderful storyteller whose name was Duncan Williamson. Duncan came from a traveller family. He was the seventh child in a family of 16 children. Now they would spend the winter time in a tent in the oak woods. But in the summer months and the spring, they'd be out travelling around Argyll and Scotland, selling their wares of tin and baskets, working in farms. But in the winter it was often cold and dark. And you know, when it came to Christmas time, they didn't have lots of presents. No, no. But they always had a fire, a campfire. And Duncan's mum and dad were wonderful storytellers. And often they would sit around the flames of the fire and they would hear such wonderful stories that the stories would carry them off to another place in another time. And often these stories were better presents than anything you could buy today. And these stories are gifts for us too. So I'd like to share one with you. Are you ready? Okay. Long ago, in Scotland, in a little village, it was Christmas Eve. (sighs) It was early evening, but already dark. The street was glistening with frost. And an old dog, an old collie dog, was walking down the street. He 
He was cold. He could see his breath on the air. His paws were almost numb, walking on the icy ground. Oh, 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 it's cold night tonight, cold night tonight, said the dog. Oh, oh, I wonder if anybody's left out some scraps of food for me. But he looked. He didn't see anything thrown out in any doorway. But when he looked through the windows of the houses in this village, oh, he could see lots of excitement inside. Oh, my goodness, there were people plucking turkeys, people stirring puddings, people making punch, making mince pies. There were people decorating Christmas trees, lighting candles. There were children laughing, wrapping presents, writing cards. Oh, oh, oh. said the old collie dog. Oh, it must be Christmas Eve. Oh, the humans, they're all busy and excited for Christmas Day tomorrow. Oh, they're all staying inside their houses. Nobody is outside. Nobody's thinking of me. Oh, well, it's going to be a cold night tonight and a hungry night for me. Just then, meow. Something moved in front of him under the lamplight. Meow. Who's that? It's me, Meow, the cat. Hello, Meow. How are you? Cold night tonight. Meow. It's very cold night tonight. Oh, and my whiskers are freezing. Well, I've been looking around, see if anybody left out some milk for me, but no, nothing, not a drop tonight. No, no, the humans there. They're all indoors. They're all getting excited for their Christmas tomorrow. Nobody is thinking of us stray animals wandering around here. Oh, I remember when I was a sheepdog on the farm and the farmer was very kind to me, but ah, oh, he's long gone now and I don't have anyone to mind me. No, my owner's gone too. I have to forage for myself for whatever food I can find. Ah, oh, well, you know... That little old lady who lives in the last house in the village, she usually leaves out some food, but I've just been there and tonight there's, there's nothing. In fact, the house is very dark and cold. There's no smoke coming from her chimney. She has no candle lighting in her window, not like the other houses. Oh, well, maybe, maybe she's not there, said the dog. I know she's a very kind lady and she'd always leave something out if she had it. But uh, maybe she's away. No, she has nowhere else to go. She's an old widow woman. She's all on her own, just like us. Oh, said the dog. In that case, maybe, maybe she's not well. Maybe the old kind widow woman is on her own and not well. Maybe we should go and see her, see if we can help her. Right, said the cat. The cat and the dog started to make their way up the street when all of a sudden they heard Meow! 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 What's that? Oh, I know who that is, said old collie dog. That'll be Peacock. <laughs> peacock crowing to the moon, trying to show off his big feathers. <laughs> Look, come in through the hedge here, I'll show you. He lives in a farmyard. He's usually standing on the wall, crowing to the moon. Look, there he is. <laughs> Meow! Good night! The peacock, where are you two going? Oh, the dog, we're, we're on our way uh, up to the, the old widow woman who lives in the small house at the end of the village. Oh! We, we think that she might be, uh, be sick in her bed and there's no fire lighting in her house and she might be cold and she, she might be hungry. Meow! Well, said peacock, I know what she needs then. What does she need? But she needs something for her fireplace. Look, my owner, the shopkeeper, he's been chopping wood all afternoon. There's a pile of wood over there. There's logs. I, myself, said the peacock, will bring the old lady some wood. Oh, that's a, that's a very good idea, said the dog. But maybe I should bring her something too. I mean, after all, it's Christmas. Uh, what can I bring her? Uh, now let me think. Oh, oh, do you know what? You know what? Uh, in the butcher shop. Sometimes he leaves bones out for me, bones in an old bucket. But sometimes, you know, when I'm eating the bones, I can see through the back door of the shop and I can see things in there, like lots of meat. And sometimes I see big succulent sausages hanging up. Oh, maybe I could squeeze in the back door of the butcher shop and maybe I could get some sausages for the little old lady. Do you think she'd like that? Oh, I'm sure she'd love that. Well, I'll go there. So the cat, well, if that is what you're going to do, maybe I should think of some gift as well. Meow, let me see, what do I like? Oh, well, I love a fish. 
Oh, yes, indeed, I love fish. And the fishmonger can often be quite kind to me. He leaves heads and tails out in a bucket for me sometimes. And I've noticed boxes of fresh fish behind his counter. Oh, maybe I could go and find some fish for the little old lady. Would she like that? I'm sure she'd love some fish. So it was decided. The peacock went to get two logs of wood. The dog found his way round the back of the butchers and he found a big, long string of sausages. They were so long the dog had to hold his neck up high and his head back so the sausages wouldn't trail along the ground. And the cat managed to slink her way round the back of the fishmongers and she found two lovely, tasty kippers. Meow! Delicious, said the cat. And she held them in her mouth. And the peacock, the dog and the cat made their way up the road in the moonlight towards the old woman's house. And when they got to the front gate, an owl was sitting on the gate looking at them. What are you doing here? We, we've, we've come to call on the, the little old lady. She's, she doesn't seem to be well. There's no sign of life in her house and we think she's inside, but maybe not well enough to come out. Hoo-hoo. I've been here for two days, said the owl. I've been on the lookout for some scraps, but nothing for two days, nothing. Hoo-hoo. I don't think she's there at all. Hoo-hoo. Well, maybe we should knock on the door and see, said the dog. The dog went up and he tapped on the door. No answer. The cat meowed through the letterbox. Meow, meow. No answer. The peacock tapped on the knocker. Pop, 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 pop. No answer. The owl hooted through the keyhole. <laughs> and eventually they heard footsteps coming towards the door. And the latch was taken off and the door was opened. And there was the little old lady wrapped up in her shawl. <coughs> oh, I'm so sorry, my animal friends. Look at you. I have nothing at all to give you to eat. I am so sorry. I've been sick in my bed the last few days. I couldn't go out. Well, said the dog, you don't have to go out tonight, because we've come to visit you, and we've brought you gifts for Christmas. Oh! said the little old lady, delighted to hear the dog speaking. May we come in, said the dog. Of course you can. Come in, my animal friends. Come in and welcome. Well, the peacock came in and put down the wood. The dog came in and put down the sausages. The cat came in and put down the kippers. And the owl came in and hoo-hoo, hooted. Well, you've brought me a feast, said the little old lady. Let me go and cook them straight away. Right, said peacock. You cook the food and we'll make the fire. So Peacock, Dog and Cat, they put the logs in the fire. And after a while, the logs began to burn and the lovely flames appeared. Lovely yellow and orange and red flames were flickering up the chimney. Purple, red, sparks were flying. There were shadows flickering around the room and from the little kitchen they could smell the sausages sizzling. They could smell the kippers bubbling away. They could hear the little old lady humming happily. (laughs) Well, well, said Dog. It's looking better in here. This room is warming up now. We're nice and cosy with the fire lighting. And it's nice bright flames coming out. And that food is going to be delicious. Oh, yes, things are improving around here, but there's still something missing, said the dog. There's something missing here. Something not in this house that all the other houses seem to have. I know what it is, said the cat. It's a Christmas tree. She has no Christmas tree. Oh, that's true, said the dog. She has no Christmas tree. We can't get her a Christmas tree now. It's far too late. I can make a Christmas tree, said the peacock. How can you make a Christmas tree, peacock? You're a peacock. I know I'm a peacock, but I can do lots of things. Now, said peacock, if you do what I say, I'm going to make the most magnificent Christmas tree that woman will ever see. Cat, meow, come here. Can you sit by the fire? 
and blink your big green eyes. The cat sat on one side of the fire and blinked her big green eyes. Blink, 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 blink. Owl, hoo-hoo, can you come and sit on the other side of the fire and blink your big round eyes? Blink, 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 hoo-hoo. The owl blinked its big round eyes. Now, dog, you can lie there like a, like, like a nice comfortable rug on the floor and I will display my feathers. And the peacock stood in front of the roaring fire and he stretched out his feathers as high and as wide as he could. What looked like a huge colourful fan appeared in front of the fire. Feathers of green and blue and purple and silver started to shimmer as Peacock shimmered his feathers in front of the flames of the fire that was sparkling behind as the cat's eyes blinked as the owl's eyes blinked and when the little old lady came into the room with the sausages and fish all cooked up (gasps) she gasped oh my goodness she said that is the most beautiful Christmas tree I have ever seen in my whole life. And indeed it was a magical sight. If you have ever seen a peacock with its feathers spread out, if you've ever seen a peacock stand in front of a fire, you'll see what I mean. Well, they laughed and they sang and they ate and they drank. The dog, the cat, the owl, The peacock and the little old lady had a most wonderful Christmas Eve. The stories they told each other you wouldn't believe. Dog remembered when he was a young sheepdog up on the hills. And Owl remembered tales from the woods that she had heard. And Cat remembered when she was a little kitten playing with ribbons. And the little old lady remembered when she was young. When she was a girl. The games they used to play at Christmas. The songs they sang. The food they ate. Oh, the hours passed happily. Until uh, 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 the cock crew in the morning. And as soon as the cock crew, the animals could no longer speak. But the little old lady was tired anyway, and she said, Oh, my lovely friends, thank you for bringing me the most magical Christmas. Now it's time I went back to my bed, and you better go back to your places too. So she opened the door, and the dog said, Woof! And off he went, back into the village, and curled up in a blanket in a doorway. And the cat said, meow. The cat went off down the street and found an old box to curl up in. And meow. The peacock went back to the farmyard and stood on the wall. And the owl, hoo-hoo, hoo-hoo, flew into the woods, into the tree, and went to sleep. And they all dreamed happy dreams. And they all agreed it was the happiest Christmas they had ever had. Snip, snap, snout. The story is out. Thank you very much, Kate Corkery, for sharing that wonderful story. What a lovely message. You don't have to have a lot of things to have a happy Christmas. And you can just make a magical Christmas with each other. If you like that story, there's a book of stories by Duncan Williamson called Fireside Tales of the Traveller Children. Now, it's time to dig deep into my bag of happies and say thank you to our new subscribers. Hello to Owlets Daisy and Hazel in Tannay in Switzerland. And hello to new Owlet Lindsay in the northwest of the US, who is five and a half. And hello to her three year old brother. Lindsay especially enjoys the spooky stories. She's waiting for the arrival of a second little brother after the holidays. And recently enjoyed the story Pixie Dust because that family also had another baby. Exciting times, Lindsay. Enjoy your Christmas. And hello to Oliver, who is four, from Chattanooga in Tennessee in the US. Oliver likes to listen to the stories with his grandma. 
and Oliver's granddad has a birthday just before Christmas, so it's a double celebration for them. Hope you all enjoy listening to some stories together. And hello to Isla, who is eight, from Chelmsford in Essex in the UK. Isla particularly loves the story Nora and the Aki Fruit. I love that one too, Isla. And hello to super great fan Bridget, who is seven, in Canberra in Australia. Bridget has been listening to super great kids' stories since the 15th episode and is still enjoying them. That's lovely to hear, Bridget. Thank you. And hello to Leo, who is six, from Pacifica in California. Leo loves listening to the shout-outs and particularly likes the scary stories. Hurrah! And thank you to all our subscribers. We couldn't do this without you. Teamwork makes the dream work. And as a special thank you, this Christmas, we're releasing the film of the second session from our live show in London. Now to say some thank yous for the super great drawings which you've sent in of our stories. Sanam, who is five and lives in Brooklyn in New York, sent us a lovely drawing of Adi and the Zimwi, a story from Zanzibar in Tanzania. I wonder if you liked the song about the shell in that story, Sanam. Good writing too. Thanks very much for sharing your picture. And thanks to Wiley, who is six and lives in North Carolina in the US. Wiley has sent us a carefully drawn picture of the little red hairy man. All set in the rolling green hills of Derbyshire, where Rachel, the storyteller, lives. Thank you, Wiley. And thanks to Dominic, who is four, who was excited when he was given a Super Great Kids Stories colouring book. And he sent us a beautifully coloured picture of the story from India, The Parrot's Advice. Thanks for sending it, Dominic. Ah, and Juno, who is five and a half from Jersey City in New Jersey, has sent an energetic picture of the fearsome red dragon from the Welsh folktale, The Two Dragons. We love your dragon-sharp teeth and nails and his spiky scales. Very scary indeed. Thank you, Juno. And a super great thank you to Nova Pass, who is six and lives in Illinois in the US, who sent in an imaginative drawing of the North American story, Coyote Makes the Stars. I can really feel the dancing that Coyote and all the other dancers are doing. Twirling, bending, swaying and quivering, and even doing a dance called the mashed potato. Thank you very much for your super great picture, Nova. And Diana, who is six from Massachusetts in the US, has sent us a fun drawing of the Russian story Marusha and Father Frost. I really like the way you've drawn the tree and included the blue ribbon tied around a branch, which is a bit like a magical gift from her mother. Father Frost is a bit scary, isn't he? The way he blows out sparkling frost. I'm glad the story has a happy ending, though. Thanks for sharing your picture with us, Diana. And that's it for this Christmas. Sleep well and we'll talk to you soon. This story was recorded at Wardour Studios in London. Climb on board and take a ride on the London Underground in Kate Wilkinson's book Edie and the Box of Flits. Edie finds an abandoned box while travelling on the tube train in London. And when she picks it up, <gasps> she feels something fluttering inside. Meet the Flits. Discover how Edie gets tangled up in an adventure involving spooky ghost stations and a whole underground world just out of sight. And in the second book, which is just out, Edie and the Flits in Paris, join Edie as she explores the Paris metro and meets some French Flits who desperately need her help. The books are funny, exciting and insightful. I really like them. That's the Edie books by Kate Wilkinson, suitable for ages 7 to 11. <laughs>